Hello traders, it's Mark here from the Day Trading Room. Uh, a bit of a different video this evening as we approach um, midnight on the 12th of October, uh, midnight London time on the 12th of October. So let's get started now with uh, you know a little bit of a, a little bit of a, uh, a background onto algorithms and uh, and black box trading. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, stuff in the news recently uh, about these flash orders, which are a type of high frequency trade. Uh, you know, you can you can get a lot of information about that, but essentially that's just where people are finding out your orders before the rest of the market. Uh, and obviously, if you're an institutional player with a big size, that's uh, that's a big edge for for somebody to know that that, that uh, trade is going to hit the market. Um, but when I consider algorithms uh, black boxes and robots or bots whatever you however you like to to call them uh, I consider it as uh, someone who's trying to disguise their true um, their true trade they're trying to split the trade up into various uh, smaller trades and trying to disguise their true intentions now um, in the futures markets the arbitrage traders who are trading against the uh, Dow Cash, uh, the basket of 30 stocks, will always bring it into line if they ever get out of sync. So if someone comes along uh, with a big order and sweeps four or five levels of, uh, of, uh, of bid or of offer, then you know someone's going to come straight in and um, and sell that and buy the Dow futures because there'll be a discrepancy there and there's and there are uh, there are computers and servers uh, all over the world that are sitting there basically just doing that just arbitraging off those two but putting those aside what do we want to focus on is uh, the algorithms that we can spot uh, in the dome how we can use them to our advantage now, in the olden days, when I trade on traded on the LSE, you get a situation. This is when robots were very, uh, very new, and they were very basic, and they'd have a situation where um, they were so, they were easy to manipulate. You could manipulate them, and they used to make a lot of money um, from using their their strategies and their their trading algorithms and understanding exactly what they're trying to achieve. It's a bit like you know, gaming theory, or it's a bit like um, if you're taking a penalty in football. Um, you know, you'll you don't need to know which side to shoot uh, the ball. You just need to know which side the goalie is going to dive and go the opposite way. It's the same. You know. It's, anyway, what I'm trying to say really is the fact that you're looking. If you understand what the algorithm is trying to achieve, and how he's achieving it then you can take a step back and rework that and look at it and use it to your advantage. So, for example, if I see, uh, let's say here, you can see I've got the 7 here on the bid at uh, 10, 9, 65, rafter hours now, so this is just a pure example. Um, if I see that traded, I see it coming through the time of sales as 7 or uh, 4 and 3 or whatever, and then I see someone come back on immediately with, with say another 10 contracts and then I see that traded and then I see it come back on with another 10 and then I see that traded and then I see it come back on with another 10 and basically that's an algorithm it's a basic algorithm it's a basic uh, high frequency trading uh, type type uh, black box and all he's doing is he's looking to buy a large amount of, of, uh, of futures of futures contracts at that price. Now that's a very basic algorithm. There are different types. There are types that will um, adjust from passive to aggressive, and the you know as the market moves their way, they may become more aggressive to try and get their, their trade done. As it moves against them, they'll become more passive, and they won't be and they'll step back a bit and they'll just see and let the market come to you. At the end of the day, all they're trying to achieve is one thing: they're trying to achieve the best possible price and to get their order done. Um, so that's all they're trying to achieve. They want to look at the end of the day or the end of the, the period the algorithm's running for and they want to see that they've got the best possible price they can. Um, which is why the algorithms were invented because you come along and you stick in a 5,000 uh, contract buy order into the market on the YM, you're just going to get an absolutely awful price. You're going to spike it up and you're just going to be throwing money away 
to, to the other side of the trade. So they're just trying to work their order to their advantage and get the best possible price. So when I, the way I use algorithms today uh, in the, when I'm trading futures is a lot different now and it's not quite, um, well it's not easy at all, but when I first started out in the LSE it was, it was easy. You could manipulate the algorithms. Uh, when the book was really, really thin in the morning, you'd pick out the bots, you'd find one that always went high bid, you'd find a, a share with a really large spread, you'd go high bid, you'd probe, you'd probe for the algorithms, you'd see one going high bid over, above you, uh, and then what you'd do obviously is go really high bid so that he went one above you, then you'd take him. So you were forcing him to quote a price that was as inefficient. But anyway, that doesn't happen now. You know, we're, we're 10 years down the line. Uh, the game's changed. But in reality, the situation's still the same. You're getting to a point in the market where that algorithm is active. So, you know, you may come down to a support level or resistance level uh, or some level that the algorithm is interested in. And what will happen is that will fire off the algorithm. And what we are looking for then is, is little telltale signs on the dome which may suggest that buying programs or selling programs are active. Now, not to be confused with buying or selling programs which are buying baskets of stocks or selling baskets of stocks uh, on the Dow or the S&P or across the New York Stock Exchange or whatever, which you can sometimes see in the ticks when you get that plus a thousand ticks, you get the minus a thousand ticks. That's just, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a big buying a buying order, just hitting the market, just buying it in a basket of stocks. Talking about futures now on the dome. What am I specifically looking for? Okay, what, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for um, a level to be hit, but it not to, to lift. So in this instance, we go back to this little example here. If this seven, if this uh, bid is being hit at 10.965, um, we've got a lot of red on the time and sales, red, red, red. Um, it's dropping to maybe 64, maybe 63, but it's coming straight back up to 65 bid. Um, and then it's being reloaded. There's a guy coming on, he's being hit. A lot of red here. You know, you're going to get a bit of noise. You know, you're going to get a bit of trading at 66, you're going to get a bit of trading. But what you're looking for is generally for the volume to increase. So you're looking at these bars here. You can also see them on a market profile type chart. You're looking for these to expand, for these to push out quickly when we're trading down to a level. Now this is most obvious when we've run down quickly to a level, we've found support, we've maybe popped up, popped back, popped down, popped back up again, and then you're seeing the very last of the sellers, they're still very aggressive because they're hitting bids. But what you're watching for, and which is why you get this head start, is you're basically seeing that someone is stepping onto the bid, and he's an algorithm because he's sitting there, he's reloading, he's waiting to see if these get lifted, and he's reloading again, and you're going to see this volume bar grow. You know, this will grow and this will grow and you'll see it visually popping out and you'll see a lot more trade done at that level. Now, that's a very simplified algorithm. Um, more often than not, you'll see it over a period of, of say, four or five ticks on the YM. Uh, the ES is a little bit different. Uh, but the YM, you'll see that you'll see it grow over a period of four or five ticks, and that's because the algorithm, uh, the the more modern algorithms and the more advanced algorithms, are sensing that there's still a bit of selling pressure there, so they'll drop down one, they'll drop down one tick to 64, and they'll see if they're still getting that those orders, and if they are, they'll drop down to 63. They don't want to stand there at 65. You know, if the s and is getting hit, the Nasdaq's getting hit, the Russell's being hit, the DAX is being hit, and they're the only person in the whole of the in the whole of the futures market equity uh, equity indices that are sitting there. You know, they're intelligent enough to know to drop down, to drop down. But when you're seeing them holding, and that's the key point. You know, they may be buying all the way down to get their order, but when you see them holding. And even better, when you see them holding and then you see them stepping up, or if you see them holding, you see a lot of red, then you see green and you see it run away, then you see it come back and test, then you've got a great low risk reward trade. You know, you can go in, you can hide behind them five or six ticks, and then you can take the trade. So it basically gives you a head start over um, actually waiting for that support level because you can watch it in the dome you can see how the volume increases at that level you can see it reload and you can see 
basically a conflicting signal with the time and sales because this will be blood red you'll see lots of selling coming in and traditional tape readers who are just looking at the time and sales are going to expect it to continue but if you're not seeing the bid dropping what you're doing is you're seeing the very first uh, point of when the balance may tip now you know he may lift completely he may get his order he may get his two or three hundred contracts lift and it may continue lower so it's not quite as simple as just as just doing that um you know it's not a foolproof system otherwise you know i'll be buying a couple of hundred contracts myself right in front of him and, and, and having a stop behind him you know it's just part of your arsenal you can use it as support levels you can use it as your key levels if you then see that sort of situation i mean if you look at this example here now i know it's a, a bit of a poor example because it's after hours and it's it's very thin and what have you but you can see here how uh there's been a quite a lot traded at 59 which is actually held so the market looks like it's popped down to that 59 level a fair few's traded there uh, and it's lifted back up um, and you can see it's just four holding there he may well be an algorithm he may well get his four filled and put it back on another four and put back on another four um, so that's a sort of basic very basic algorithm and, and, a, and a sort of a black box type uh, you know setup that I'll look for at key levels and when I see that uh, that sort of setup uh, it will give me uh, if I'm looking for a long already and I see that it's just a trigger I need to go in um, one setup it works very well for uh, very quickly is is this sort of setup here this is the one we had today uh, I mentioned it in, a, in an earlier video it's a classic uh, it's a classic uh, a classic setup when you've got a move in one direction and you see that there are a lot of institutional interest because the volume's high and there's been a reprice, you get this pullback and that's often where you'll see these algorithms step in because they are, they've been buying, buying, buying. They've seen this pullback and now they're stepping up. They're stepping up. They want to get as much, uh, many contracts as they can at this discounted price, at this wholesale price because they're looking to buy uh, for, for a further push, you know, for several months several weeks ahead whatever their time frame is so when they see this little bit of weak retail weakness then they're in and they're looking to buy and what you'll see is they'll step up onto the bid uh, there'll be a lot of selling coming in the market won't, won't move lower it'll dawn upon everyone that this is going to be a bit of support and and then there'll be a lot of buying and then what also happens is the algorithms they uh, then may switch to aggressive mode and what they'll do is they'll constantly go high bid so they'll go high bid or they'll take the offer and leave the remaining on. So if they've got 20, they'll they'll stick on the 20 there at 966. It'll get nine filled and they'll leave 11 there. They'll leave it for a few seconds. doesn't get filled. They'll step up again. doesn't get filled. They'll leave it for, you know, and they'll keep nibbling and nibbling and nibbling and nibbling. And that's how you get those flush tops because you get these algorithms sometimes that are all panicking to get out. They're into extra aggressive mode. And very often you'll see 300 contracts come on the bid. It doesn't get filled. He comes up, he pushes up, he pushes up, pushes up. Eventually, um, the arbitrage guys uh, across the uh, the Dow stocks will just uh, will, will just fill him. But if you can see that sort of thing right at a peak, you know, you know that there's just someone just trying to get out. Perhaps there's an algorithm getting far too aggressive, trying to get the last of that order done. It may be actually meaningless to him. He may have 10,000 thousand contracts and he just wants to get his last 300 done and so the traders come in he's seen the algorithm he said oh you know what well, i've got 300 left to do dial that up to extra aggressive it's not going to affect my uh, my average price very much so you know that's that's the sort of insight um into it you know it's a bit of a secretive world but if you study the dome, if you study the tape, at the key levels is the important point, and at the levels of interest, there's no point in watching all day every day, because you know there are algorithms there, but they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not going to be displaying anything of any interest to you. You want to wait to the levels that you're interested in, and then you can start to see the patterns appear. You can start to pick out the algorithms on the book, and then you can start to use these uh, black boxes uh, to your advantage.